Hi, hi, hello, long time no see. So, in my teens, I was an avid fan of Gilmore Girls, and this was because when I came home from school, it just happened to be playing probably reruns on um, the channel that also introduced me to another one of my brain rots, Supernatural. We will not be getting into that today because, oh my god, my brain rot from Supernatural is incomparable to anything else. Um, and we do not time. We do not tie anyone, but we also do not have time to get into that for anyone today. So today is going to be about my weird attempt to get into the minds of Rory Gilmore and Jess Mariana because I was a, <laughs> shall we say, fan or maybe even stan of the Rory and Jess relationship because of the whole like, oh, he's like misunderstood and like everyone in town hates him, but he's soft only for one person. And really, see, I, I think Jess gets a lot of flack for being like the bad boy archetype because like, I will defend him to my dying breath because like, he obviously comes from a troubled family, and you learn that through the series. Um, and like, he wants, like he's acting out because he wants other people to, um, to, I guess, hate him because that's like his way of controlling things, of having a, some modicum of control over the situation. And when in reality, he's, you know, um, he's smarter than they give him credit for, and he just doesn't succeed in a way that society deems is acceptable in, like, a capitalist way. Um, he was also employee of, like, the month or something at Walmart, which I guess is succeeding in a capitalist way, but whatever, we're, there's too much to talk about again. What I'm talking about today is my derangement, um, which I basically talk about in every video, and if I don't explicitly talk about it, then it should be obvious just from like context clues. But this in particular was when I tried to read Ayn Rand and Ernest Hemingway, two of the um, authors that were championed by Rory Gilmore and Jess Mariano, respectively, um, during their. See, I want to say on and off relationship, but they didn't really have an on and off. They were just flirting and then on and then off and then on, but not really because anyway, Rory does not do him any like, again, not going into that right now. I'm sure you've seen those videos, but I want to talk about Ayn Rand and Ernest Hemingway, and that is not a sentence that I'd ever thought I'd ever say in my life, ever. Um, but basically, it's the fact that I thought I could um, try and decide which side of the relationship had the more correct author opinions um because as you know or as you might not know they were avid readers and as avid readers they had really strong opinions on which authors slept shit and um basically this video is about how they're both very pretentious about what books they like and um they both suck shit on rand um the founder of objectivism i think is the philosophy um uh, the best way to summarize it and again i'm not an excerpt on this so take this with a grain of salt but adran basically came from an era in in um the soviet union i believe where she saw like a bunch of people fucking shit up and then she moved over to America and saw that 
it was better. Like, capitalism was a better way of life for her because she escaped the USSR. Um, I'm probably butchering this so bad, but basically her worldview formed and her philosophy was that if you are a capitalist and you're earning a lot of money and you are succeeding in life, you are doing so because you're just awesome. You're just so awesome and that's your lot in life and because you are smart and you work hard and um, you have all these great redeeming qualities, that is why you're succeeding and everyone else who is not succeeding just sucks. It's not because of, you know, their social economical circumstances. It's not because of anything about, you know, societal um, barriers. No, they just suck ass. Like, um, that's entirely their fault, and we can't do anything about it. Sorry. So, <laughs> that's Ayn Rand for you. And then, Ernest Hemingway, who I do not know a lot about the philosophy he believed in, but I do know that, um, he really <laughs> liked this one place in Havana that we visited, um, and... I feel like he also maybe liked the cats there. As you can tell, I've done a really deep dive on this stuff. Um, but Ernest Hemingway has this really like ver no, what's the opposite of verbose? Like cal calcitrant? Cal 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 See, you can tell I read a lot, but I've never said these words out loud. Like I've never had a conversation with anyone, so I know words that I do not know how to pronounce. He uses short sentences, and um, Ayn Rand uses very long monologues. So <laughs> that's the main difference. Um, Rory mentions in the show there is like a 50 page monologue. She is not exaggerating, there is a 50 page monologue. I haven't read the, uh, Fountainhead, which is the book she mentions in the show. I've read Atlas Shrugged, which is, I guess, the spiritual sequel to that, um, and I low-key kind of was like, it got me for a bit, because I was young, impressionable, and a teen, and, um, going through, like, my angsty phase, which convinced me somehow that maybe Ayn Rand was right, maybe she had an idea about, like, all this, like, the people who also, because her characters are not very sympathetic, the ones that are, you know, um, failing in life, they're kind of also assholes, but that doesn't mean they deserve to, you know, have, have this terrible fate befall them in a way that Ayn Brand writes. It, it's like, they can be assholes and they can succeed. In fact, a lot of assholes are successful. Anyway, her 50-page monologue in um, the Atlas Shrug book, you can tell I don't have notes because if I did, I would not be having this many tangents. But then again, who knows? Um, this is me we're talking about, so we would probably have as many tangents, if not more, just better structured. The 50 page monologue is as it sounds, but in comparison to Ernest Hemingway, I found it more engaging, I guess. Just like the way that Ernest Hemingway writes was not engaging for me and to each their own, but it was just like, you're giving me nothing. It's giving absolute just like, you know, do a leap, a dance where she's just like, that's what it's giving. And it kind of, I don't know, also resonated with me because my writing style, if you have ever read anything I've written, is um, 
also very verbose. I like to use as many words as I can. And if I can't use that many, then I will use more. So I kind of jumped with that. And then with Ernest Hemingway, the plot just really, didn't really, I don't know. It was either Farewell to Arms or The Sun Always Rises. And the fact that I do not remember does not reflect on the book, but maybe it does. I just, it wasn't my thing. So the, <laughs> the book is about an American who gets injured on the front lines. It might be a farewell to arms because that makes more sense because, you know, arms were assuming fighting in the war. I forgot which war. <laughs> Um, but in Europe, so one of the world wars, probably, um, second world war, <laughs> I'm gonna guess, um, but he is injured, he meets a British, I think a British nurse, they fall in love, and then, because he doesn't want to go back to the front lines, after he recovers, he deserts, the army um and then i forget what happens in between that basically they're on the run now um they're deserters and somehow well we kind of know how but british nurse gets pregnant and um is they have like this new found invention new fangled invention um which is not an epidural, but it's like laughing gas or something, where, um, <laughs> this is the only part I remember because it kind of really confused me, and, and, um, she is having a really painful natural birth, so they give her, like, this, um, laughing gas thing, and then she gets that kind of erotic, not erotic, but kind of, like, weirdly aroused or like this she says something along the lines of like it's like my 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 whole being like i gotta birth this baby like i'm gonna do it i'm gonna birth this baby and ernest hemingway writes it in a weird like erotic tone <laughs> and then the baby is unfortunately stillborn and um the I hate calling her the British nurse, but I do not remember any of these characters' names. Um, so the British nurse's child is stillborn. Um, and unfortunately, she also passes away in childbirth. Maybe it's World War One. I, I, I really don't know. Um, and... The, just the way that it's written, it's just incredibly jarring because after he gets the news that his wife passed he gets the news or he gets a hold i think maybe his stillborn child who is stillborn um and then he just kind of leaves the hospital and walks out into the rain and that's the end of the book which did not make any sense to me at all. and I think in Silver Linings Playbook that's the book he threw out the window more like he was reading in the middle of the night and he um if I was more manic I was also probably gonna throw it out the window because it was just it was so jarring just like the tonal dissonance um was really something and so I came out of that experiment, that reading experiment, going, I don't know what y'all, like, what Rory and Jess were on. Like, you two seem to be, you know, a fictional relationship, but, like, I do not respect any of your opinions on 